Larry, welcome to the ARK Investment Forum. We're really happy to have you as a speaker here today and uh, want to learn about all your thoughts around mobility. Great. Okay, Thanks. so the first question, an easy one. If you think out 10 or 20 years from now, what is the future of mobility? How are people going to get around differently than they do today? Well, I think there are several trends converging, technology and business trends. Most importantly, we're working on autonomous cars, cars that actually drive themselves. You know, for over 130 years, the assumption of the industry has been that we're willing to spend our time driving the car, and now we see technology that will literally let you ride around much safer than a human-driven car. Beyond that, connected cars, where you, cars communicate with each other, shared rides, and I think very exciting is the ability to tailor design the car for the kind of trips we take. Riding to the conference today, we were stopped at an intersection. I couldn't help but observe here in Calgary, every car that drove through that intersection had just one person in it, yeah. but it had four or five seats. So now we have a chance to tailor design the car, make it much more mass efficient, make it electrically driven, and that gets us um, some real efficiency gains. So I think you're gonna see this convergence of connected, shared, driverless, tailor-designed electric vehicles that's going to fundamentally transform how we move around, and quite honestly, how goods move around as well. Right, so you're talking in 10 to 20 years. This is the time frame you see these radical changes. I believe in the next three to five years, you'll have proof points that autonomous cars are very real. And then I believe beyond that, we'll begin to scale those new mobility systems. And yes, by 2025, we're going to have a really very different world for mobility. Now, people will still be able to drive their cars if they want to do that, but a lot of people would just soon spend their time doing something else. In fact, I concluded when I was head of research for General Motors that driving was the, dis the distraction for a lot of people. Why would they text going 70 miles an hour on an interstate if they thought it was more important to drive safely? <laughs> so we really, we really need to step up to that. You know, 1.3 million people a year die on the world's roads, and we believe connected and autonomous vehicles can eliminate 90% of the crashes. So if we can get to that full potential one day sooner, we save 3,000 lives. So this is a pretty important mission. That is really interesting because a lot of people, when they think about autonomous, they think it's not as safe as me driving, but the reality is humans make a lot of errors. Humans are, make a whole lot of errors. Over 90% of the crashes are due to human error. And with the autonomous system, you basically have eagle eye vision with eyes in the back of your head. You're looking 360 degrees around the car, right. and you're bringing in a massive amount of data from lasers and radars and cameras, and you're able to process that. And in fact, the car is making the same two decisions you make over and over again. How fast should I be going, and which way should I be steering? And um, it, it, it doesn't get drunk, it doesn't get tired, it doesn't get distracted. So we have a real great chance to improve safety dramatically. Okay, the big question then is when we move to this very radically different way of getting around, what does it mean for the car fleet? Today, we have about a billion cars. The, the view is that by 2040, it will double because there's more people becoming wealthy <clears throat> in the world and uh, a larger population. Is that assumption going to be valid in this new way of getting around? Well, the time frame you're talking about, I don't think that's a valid assumption. I think we're going to see machines that are quite different from what we've seen before. Um, the cars today are the ultimate driving machine. In fact, that's BMW's tagline. And the cars have been designed around the driver, riding, handling, acceleration. The future will be about the ultimate riding machine. And that riding machine will be either personally used or shared. Uh, in the shared version, I think the car will become very commodity-like, which really is an uh, implication for the auto industry around their pricing ability. Right. A lot of the pricing power in the industry is up up-level options. Uh, yes, we can still have exclusive vehicles, and those could become very fashion-oriented. So um, will we be tri driving more miles? I don't think people will travel that much more individually. There's a time constraint in our life. Certainly there's more people. We'll be able to serve more people, older people who aren't capable of driving, younger right, people right. who don't have a license, disabled people. So that's a good thing. So there may be some growth there. Importantly, these ultimate riding machines can be designed for a 300,000 mile life rather than a 150,000 mile life. So if we did just that, that would have the number that we need, not counting for economic growth. So I'd be careful about making that bold assumption of the auto fleet growing worldwide on that scale. I think you're gonna see a whole new portfolio of mobility solutions for people and for how we move goods. Well, thank you. Radical change is coming. Um, it's interesting to hear your views, um, and, and I'm excited about what the future may hold. Thank you for coming to our forum. Yeah, thank you, Jackie.